how do you get the latency to be so low and how do you make it even lower? We um, took inspiration from Google. There's this whole concept called tail latency. Uh, it's a paper by Jeff Dean and uh, another person where it's not enough for you to just test a few queries, see if there's fast and conclude that your product is fast. It's very important for you to track the P90 and P99 latencies, uh, which is like the 90th and 99th percentile. Because if a system fails 10% of the times and you have a lot of servers, uh, you could have like certain queries that are at the tail failing more often without you even realizing it. And that could frustrate some users, especially at a time when you have a lot of queries, uh, suddenly a spike, right? So it's very important for you to track the tail latency and we track it at every single component of our system, mm -hmm. be it the search layer or the LLM layer. In the LLM, the most important thing is the throughput and the time to first token. We usually is referred to as TTFT, time to first token, and the throughput, which is, decides how fast you can stream things. Both are really important. And of course, for models that we don't control in terms of serving, like OpenAI or Anthropic, uh, it's, it's, you know, we are reliant on them to, do, to build a good infrastructure. And they are incentivized to make it better for themselves and customers. So that keeps improving. And for models we serve ourselves, like Llama-based models, um, we can work on it ourselves by optimizing at the kernel level, right? Mm -hmm. So there we work closely with NVIDIA, who's an investor in us, and we collaborate on this framework called Tensor RT LLM. Mm -hmm. And uh, if needed, we write new kernels, optimize things at the level of like making sure the throughput is pretty high without compromising the latency. Is there some interesting complexities that have to do with uh, keeping the latency low and just serving all of this stuff? Uh, the TTFT, when you scale up, as more and more users get excited, Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of people listen to this podcast and like, holy shit, I, I want to try perplexity. They're going to show up. What's, uh, what does the scaling of compute look like? Almost from a CEO startup mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah, I mean, you got to make decisions like, should I go spend like 10 million or 20 million more and buy more GPUs? Or should I go and pay like, go on other model providers like five to 10 million more and like get more compute capacity from them? What's the trade-off between in-house versus on, on on cloud? It keeps changing. The dynamics are by the way, everything's on cloud. Even the models we serve are on some cloud provider. Sure. It's very inefficient to go build like your own data center right now at the stage we are. I think it will matter more when we become bigger. But also companies like Netflix still run on AWS and have shown that you can still scale uh, you know, with somebody else's cloud solution. So Netflix is entirely in AWS? Largely. Largely? That's my understanding. If I'm wrong, like... Let's ask... Per <laughs> yeah, let's ask perplexity. <laughs> perplexity, man. Does Netflix use AWS? Yes, Netflix uses Amazon Web Service AWS for nearly all its computing and storage needs. Okay, well, uh, what the company uses over 100,000 server instances on AWS and has built a virtual studio in the cloud to enable collaboration among artists and partners worldwide. Netflix's decision to use AWS is rooted in the scale and breadth of services AWS offers. Related questions, what specific services does Netflix use from AWS? How does Netflix ensure data security? What are the main benefits Netflix gets from using? Yeah, I mean, if I was by myself, I'd be going down a rabbit hole right now. Yeah, me too. And asking, <laughs> Why doesn't it switch to Google Cloud and that those kinds? Well, there's a clear competition right between YouTube and, um, of course, Prime Video is also a competitor. But like, uh, it, it's sort of a thing that you know. So, for example, Shopify is built on Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, Snapchat uses Google Cloud. Uh, Walmart uses Azure. So there, there are examples of great internet businesses that do not necessarily have their own data centers. Mm -hmm. Facebook have their own data center, which is okay. Like, you know, they decided to build it right from the beginning. Even before Elon took over Twitter, I think they used to use AWS and Google for for their deployment. Although famous as Elon has talked about, they seem to have used like a, a collection, a disparate collection of data centers. Mm -hmm. so, now I think, you know, he, he has this mentality that it all has to be in-house, yeah. but it, it, it frees you from working on problems that you don't need to be working on when you're like scaling up your startup. 
Also, AWS infrastructure is amazing. Like, it's not just amazing in terms of its quality. Uh, it also helps you to recruit engineers like easily because if you're on AWS and all engineers are already trained on using AWS, so the speed at which they can ramp up is amazing. So uh, does Perplexity use AWS? Yeah. And so you have to figure out how much how much more instances to buy, that, those kinds of things. You have yeah, to that, that's the kind of problems you need to solve, like more, inst- like whether, whether you wanna like keep, look, look, lo- there's, you know, it's a whole reason it's called elastic. Some of these things can be scaled very gracefully, but other things so much not like GPUs or models, like you need to still like make decisions on a discrete basis.